We just watched Panic in Year Zero on yes. this show, and the disc that I got of it was a double feature with The Last Man on Earth. The first I Am Legend movie? Yes, and it is by far the best. Really? Does it, it end as it should? Yes, it does. Good! You know, when you look at American International films from the 60s, before they got to the 70s and they went full exploitation, there really was a passion for movie making that superseded the budgets and even the abilities of the filmmakers, and that really draws you in. American International would be Roger Corman's company. They obviously would have some sort of taste in filmmaking because they're the ones that brought over a lot of the European movies. Granted, they might have chosen them for their more exploitative reasons. You don't just choose Bergman because a woman has a very low-cut blouse. Speak for yourself. Ow. I wish I could make that tiger noise. Like that? But I, I don't do it as well as I should. I, right. <laughs> Unboxing time. Unboxing time. I don't have my question. I can't find the question that oh, I found. Oh, wait, 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 but it's also what Scooby and Shaggy eat. Yeah, but in the drug world. Yeah? Uh, it's a Beastie Boys song. I take a Scooby snack, take a disco nap. Those are two drug things. I see. I think a disco nap might be ecstasy. I'm not sure. I thought a disco nap would be like if you want to take a nap before you go off for the night. As we get older. <laughs> hey, you ready yeah. for... Yeah. 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 Shh. Hey, you ready for unboxing? Yeah. We are going to unbox the hell out of all of the boxes. That's what we do here on, on Welcome to the Basement Unboxing. We also thank our donors, people who have generously donated to us on WelcomeToTheBasementShow.com. People like... Bet, Michael, Ann, Maura, Brian, Eric, Alexander, Kelsey, Tristan, Jacqueline, Patrick, Aaron, Isabel, Cody, Lindsay, and Juno, who says, you're both very cute. Thank hey. you, Juno. Maybe she's talking to the cats. That's not even all of our donors. We're going to announce the rest of them later in the show. You dropped a postcard. Shoot. It used to be so organized. We are going to open up our mailbag and start off with a handful of postcards. Ooh, nice. This one is from Steve Heron in New Jersey. Graham in Regina, Canada. I believe they say Regina, not Regina. It's Latin for queen. Peter all the way in Japan. Ooh. There's Hokusai. Yeah, that's right. Our buddy Andrew from the Wages of Cinema podcast. Oh, hey, with a picture of unsung heroes of the revolution. This is from the Petersons in Naples, Florida, and they have words of condolences for oh. your recent loss. Oh, thank you. And Angel thanks you as well. My parents lost their dog this year, too, also named Angel. Really? Yeah. So little, little Cocker Spaniel. God's calling all the angels home. <laughs> it's funny and sad at the same time. And this is from Lori Metzel. She says she gets such a kick out of us uh, showing their postcards on the air. And she closes with, Matt, now toss me to Craig. <laughs> gotcha. And lastly, I got an overseas envelope here. I believe this is a postcard. And I would be correct. Whoa, there's some nightmare fuel. <laughs> he wants to know if we've seen This Must Be The Place. I have seen it. I don't think you have. Yeah, it sounds familiar, but I haven't. It's the best premise of a movie that I think I've ever heard. But the movie itself, I didn't enjoy very much. An aging goth rocker turns into a Nazi hunter. Is this the one with Sean Penn? Sean Penn, Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> the movie's not that great. This is Matt from the UK. Gotcha. I want to go to Sanctuary. Why? Because Sanctuary is where you go to get more rations right? and armies. How else will you be able to defeat the Dark Tower? That's already been cut. <laughs> Did you ever see Francis Aid? No, but I've seen Francis Ha. <laughs> Didn't seem like much when I was watching it, but in retrospect, it was quite emotionally moving. It's a giant Connect Four board. I got knocked over. <laughs> it was a tense game. <laughs> What's your name? Mary Two. I call her Mary Mary. I constantly ask her why she's bugging. 
Logan decides that he needs to go and get a new face. You can do that here in the future. Unfortunately, they only have two selections, Nicolas Cage or John Travolta. <laughs> I have a famous poster that you might like looking at. Where'd they go? The Sandman and a green. Didn't you see them? Damn you, Horshack, you're useless. <laughs> My birds sing and the deep grottos whisper my name oh. he's one of those computers that's been by itself for too long it must be near now we'll find it sanctuary is like one of those hipster bars it doesn't have a sign <laughs> you just need to know where it is and now viewer questions the stupid freaking cow asks that's their handle not mine is matt wearing makeup his lips are very red and his cheeks look so rosy. I am wearing makeup, yes, but that is not the reason why my lips are red and my cheeks are rosy. I have had stupid, blotchy skin my entire life. It used to be a lot worse when I was in my 20s. Uh, it's kind of evened out now. And it doesn't help when I drink wine, because that makes the blush come out on the rose, as it were. I get really red ears. I, I hate it. But Tona does touch us up and put some yep. powder on Pow us, too. Powder just down. It's HD cameras. They're not forgiving. If you think we're looking all right, believe me, without the makeup, we look like this guy. Luda F. Styles writes, Has there ever been a movie that changed the way you think about something? When I see movies from countries that we are at war with or are potentially at war with, it makes me personalize the people in those movies. Like that taxi movie that you that, just saw. Jahar Pahani's uh, Taxi, it's a movie from Iran, and we're driving around the streets of Tehran. It's like, I don't want this place blown up. I don't want any of these people to die. These aren't the soldiers. These are the people who will be bombed if we ever bomb Tehran. And merely by making a film, he's breaking the law, and he could potentially be arrested. Yes, and you know, that shows that Iran is a an kind of a, pr a, oppressive an, an oppressive, stinky country, but foreign movies really make me empathize with another culture. Let's open a couple packages. Hey, let's do that thing. This one, there was postage due on this. Naughty, naughty. Please put sufficient postage on the packages. Oh, well, this one looks like it has a little bit of blood on it. <laughs> oh, Vincent in San Marcos, California. I believe he sent us some stuff last time. Oh, I know what that's going to be. <laughs> Postcards! A Pearl Harbor, windswept North California, all over the place. Thank you, Vincent. All right, well, this is from Steve in Philadelphia, and it is also postcards? Yeah, these are like pictures. Yeah, I wonder if his letter will illuminate things. A lot of nice things about our show. He likes the um, opening dialogue. He likes seeing it, hate it. These are postcards that he made himself wow. from his own photographs. These are really good. They're suitable for framing. We have a little wall. Uh, we, uh, we have a little covered bridge there. We have uh, fireworks over some American city. And he's put a little photograph of his cat on here. This <laughs> kitty who says hello to Ernesto and Cecil. That's great. Actually, it's a meow out. Just to Ernesto. <laughs> this, this cat's freezing out Cecil. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. All right, so what's going on with Zatoichi? The Zatoichi Report, my quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016, continues. So what's going on in Edo-era Japan these days? Well, I watched number 16 in the series. That is Zatoichi the Outlaw. Zatoichi's on the run. He's hiding out in this weird house of masseurs. They all are kind of bumbling goofs who act like the Three Stooges. It's very strange. <laughs> this is the first feature by Katsu Productions, which is the actor who plays Zatoichi. This must oh. be his production company. All right. Interesting things happen in this movie. He meets a pacifist samurai. He kills a moth with a toothpick. And it features the immortal line, Leave before I throw salt at you. Is he talking to a slug? <laughs> no, he's talking to a person. Sumo wrestlers throw down salt before they start. Really? That is what it is. And now it's time to find out who the rest of our donors are. Craig, take it away. Nora, Bernard, Abraham, David, Charles, Elizabeth, Isaac, Joseph, Kempson, Stephanie, Kevin, Maurizio, Dan, and Sierra. Thank you very much. As I mentioned, I recently saw The Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. Yes. I enjoyed this movie a lot, and I was inspired to write a little something based on it. Nice. This is called Loops. The turntable worries over record grooves for the last man on Earth. The last of his kind. Do you hear, Morgan? Turbines in a generator spin. 
A wood lathe grinds out timber spikes. Spinning. Film reel. Home movies. Spinning. Spinning. Memories whirling around on crazy replay. The wife. The child. The virus blooms. Bacilli multiplying. The trucks. The fires. The dead in the pit. The germ spins around the world. The infected spin from alive to dead to alive again. Do you hear, Morgan? The sun spins over a dead earth. The last man on earth spins in his private hell. You poor driven thing. The words repeat. Daddy, mommy, I can't see. I won't let them put you there. Come out, Morgan. The night is a spinning carousel of black slides. Lathe, turbine, bacilli, wife, child, dead. Come out, Morgan. Generator, film, wife, child, dead, dead, dead. Everything is a circle. The last man alive. Dead, alive, dead, alive, repeat. That spins me. <laughs> and so we just have a couple more packages to open. If we have to. Oh, we do, because we love it. I'll take this one. I bet that's got a bunch of postcards in it. <laughs> yeah, how did you guess? <laughs> Ooh, that's a CD. Oh, this is from Maurizio. Hey. Yes. Hi, guys. Here is a very important album from Brazilian history. One artist were responsible to giving hope to a young generation despite the military dictatorship. That's right, sick to the man. Hope you enjoy it across the language barrier. Oh. Novos Baianos? Novos Baianos. A CD, I can play those too. Yeah. And we've got a record here from T.A. Epley. Let's figure out what it is by looking at it. The old-fashioned way, with our eyes. Oh, oh, I like this. I know these guys. Ultramagnetic MC's Critical Beatdown. This is good stuff. This is Cool Keith's band before he went solo and became Cool Keith. What's something they're saying about here? This is the origin of the sample to the Prodigy song Smack My Bitch Up. Oh. T.A. writes, Egotistical Sniff should appreciate this. Yes, that is true. Egotistical Sniff is my rap alter ego <laughs> on beer and board games. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for unboxing. We hope you enjoyed the things that we presented to you. And that you will return in two weeks to watch another episode of it. This coming Friday, you can watch the new episode of Welcome to the Basement for your viewing pleasure. She just appears, and he's like, hey, let's get busy. Welcome. TV of the future has gotten really cool. It's like the Tinder of the future. <laughs> Why is it wrong to run? You shouldn't even be thinking such things. Look, you know what to do. One, two, you know what to do. <laughs> Doesn't look like he's going to be getting any. Luckily, Francis shows up with a couple of hotties, and uh, they have a big old cloud party.